Today, I'm joined by one of the pillars of the FPL US community, uh, and he himself is a massive Wolves fan. FPL Black Wolf, uh, welcome to the show, mate. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to talk to you today. Absolutely. Uh, how does it feel to be consuming freshly baked information about the 2022-20 season? Yeah, it, this is the day where it really feels real that the season's coming back um, when the right. fixtures get announced and then Twitter goes crazy with all these drafts and all <laughs> these plans. <laughs> you know, it's like how kids get candies uh, you now after <laughs> finishing school. It's the community just like that. And, it, and it's, it's good to see. I think there's still like 50 days left till the season starts. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah actually, crazy. actually, the next the next seven weeks are going to be more crazy in terms of the millions of drafts you will see, yeah, the price yeah. pre- the price prediction requests to the Premier League and all that. So that that'll be that'll be interesting. Fixtures were revealed for 22-23 season. Dan and I are here to kind of discuss the fixtures for the top six sides for 21-22 uh, season. This is what the top six sides fixtures are, and we have taken just the top eight fixtures as of now. Because uh, of the fact that the first international break, I think, comes after game week eight. So this is in no order. So yeah. So what what, what really uh, shines out for you? Which team uh, among Arsenal, Liverpool, the top six, basically? Yeah. I mean, you said this is not in any particular order, but I think you have a, a pretty good order here in terms of <laughs> difficulty. I mean, looking right. at this, I think Arsenal have easily the best first eight fixtures. Um, I wouldn't say any of those are particularly difficult games. Even Manchester United, I'm sorry to say to Man United fans, they're not as difficult as they used to be. Um, right. Maybe that will change with Ten Hag as their manager. But Arsenal's first eight fixtures look very good. So I think a lot of people are going to have at least a double up in their team game week one for Arsenal. So obviously, just, just to clarify what, what the lines are, li- lines mean on the screen, uh, the black line is uh, the away fixture for, for the team. And if there's a red line along with the black line, that means it's it's a tough, it's a like a red uh, FDR uh, fixture. I would still say, you know, they they would have a good test in the first game uh, against Crystal Palace, which is an away game. Uh, Crystal Palace, we know from last season, uh, they were fantastic at home in terms of the defense, and uh, and they were totally opposite away. Uh, so yeah, so that would be a a, a decent test for the new. Uh, Arsenal side that Arteta is trying to get together. Yeah. But yes, as you, as you rightly said, uh, the, the remaining fixtures are just just look. Uh, they, they play two of the three promoted sides in the first four game weeks, uh, yeah. and then United is an away game. Uh, yeah, as in if it's the same yeah. United uh, of last season, which I really don't think it's going to be the same. No, I don't think so. It's difficult yeah. to tell at this point. I, I don't think Correct. they're going to be as much of a pushover as they were. But Correct. as of now, it's. It's not as difficult of a fixture as it used to be, for sure. Yes, absolutely. And absolutely. And then they go to Everton, uh, which are attesting to lose Richarlison. I think um, these Arsenal fixtures are probably better for attackers. Um, I'd be very yeah. curious to see how they price the likes of Martinelli and Saka. I yeah. think Saka's going to get quite a big rise, I assume. But I'm curious about how they price Martinelli and if he has a good preseason, because I think he might be a nice budget enabler in that midfield. Right. Um, I think their defenders are probably all going to see a 0.5 million price rise, I assume. Mm. Um, Ramsdale inclusive. Yeah. yeah. I know people had Ben White for a lot of last season at 4.5. I I think he's going to be at least five this season, I think. Their star defender, Gabriel, as well. Um, Yeah. He, he, I think he was at five, if I'm not wrong. Price prediction, obviously, uh, there were a lot of tweets about it. You know, last year it came in the first week of July. Yeah. But this this time the season is starting one week before, so so you never know. Uh, I think we just need to have all our patience and just wait for it. I think so. But I think uh, at least one Arsenal player is going to be definitely in this game definitely one, game one definitely team. because as you, as you rightly pointed out, uh, definitely the attackers. Uh, Liverpool, yeah, it's been it's been. I'm a Liverpool fan, and I, even I didn't even I wasn't aware about that, which has been going around that this is the fourth consecutive season they are facing a yeah. promoted team. So yeah. it's an away game. Uh, I remember Fulham's last opening game was also at home against Arsenal, where their one side of the stadium was still getting constructed. The camera work was absolutely <laughs> symbolic because you could not see the whole coverage of the ground, yeah, yeah. and they lost three zero to Arsenal. So, so yeah, it should be it, it won't be as easy as an Anfield game, but yes, it's it's, it's a definitely a easy start. Yeah, I mean they couldn't really have asked for a better start, I don't think. Um, unfortunately, I think it means we're going to see Salah as captain in most people's teams. Yeah. I was hoping. Yeah. That Liverpool would get a really difficult game to start off with to force people to make a decision there on captain. But I think we're going to see 
Salah very, very highly owned here. Away to Fulham. And then they have Crystal Palace, Manchester United. You know what? You know what Salah can do against them. Bournemouth, yeah. Newcastle. Um, I think it. I think a triple up is likely for Liverpool players. At least a double up. Yeah. Yeah, Manchester United again away game. You know, with all due respect to Manchester United fans, uh, don't, please don't really bother if I haven't put the red line behind that. But yes. it's an away game, uh, like you said, Ten Hag's first first big game, as we can see from the United fixtures as well. They have a decent start, but then they have Liverpool at uh, number game week three. Then they have Leicester again, which is won't be easy. Then they have Arsenal. So yeah, so I think Ten Hag would would get some kind of a sense about what team to play. Depending obviously on the on the transfer window as well. Yeah, Liverpool, then Bournemouth, Newcastle. I still feel Newcastle won't be the Newcastle of last season. They would be a much better team. The kind of signings they've been having, uh, they won't be a pushover. Though it's a home game, but uh, Liverpool is expected to win this. My I just... imagine I imagine we'll see a Newcastle team similar to the team that finished the season, like very strong. Absolutely. Very Absolutely. I, I don't I don't see any reason why they would uh, go down from there or reg- regress from there. No, I don't uh, think so. so. I can, you know, put a bet that they are good candidate to finish in top eight above above the likes of Villa and. You can say it. They... You can say it. Wolves. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. I, I, think they, I think they would be definitely giving Wolves a run of the money. Uh, yeah. Liverpool, uh, the the toughest fixture that they have in first tier is against obviously Chelsea, which is an away game. They have a derby as well, which is again away and derby. Anything can happen, right? Um, the interesting thing that will be knowing who to pick for Liverpool. I think we're going to see a huge price rise for the likes of Tr- Trent. I would really like them to see it make it interesting with his price. Yeah, I don't think they're going to, but he's effectively a, a premium midfielder, the amount of points he gets. So I would love to see him priced that way, but he's not going to be. I imagine he'll be 8, 8.5. Um, I would, be yes, I, definitely 8. Definitely 8. Uh, anything b- uh, below that would be... You know, kind of a disappointment because yeah. PL game needs to move on as per the, the game on the ground. And it would be very interesting to see how much difference there would be between Robertson and Trent. I don't know whether... I, I think Robertson was at seven. Not really sure whether he'll go to seven and a half. But even if there is a difference of one, I think that'll be a big difference between yeah, Robertson and Trent. I think they Trent. need to make it interesting. I think they need to yeah. force you to make a decision here. Otherwise, Trent is going to be in most people's teams. Yeah, absolutely. I personally would and, love to see him nine, ten. They will never do that, but I personally would yeah. love to see that because he's effectively a 10 million player. Right. The the defending champions, uh, Manchester City, opening game, West Ham away. Well, what do you make of their fixtures? Difficult game to open with, away to West Ham. However, it's Man City, so I expect them to win there. And then they have a very nice run there of four fixtures, five fixtures, sorry. Then Tottenham away, which I assume is going to be a difficult game. Conte's doing amazing things with Spurs. They're making some great signings. So I, I don't think that's going to be an easy game. And then they have Wolves. So I think these are good fixtures for Man City. Um, again, I think this is likely to force people to have at least one Man City player in their team. A lot of people are looking at Haaland to start off with. It's a little unfortunate that all of the best teams have the best opening fixtures um, because yeah, that's absolutely. we're going to be able to afford all of their premiums. However, that makes right. it more exciting, in my opinion. So True, true. However, yeah, again, Man- uh, you could argue that any of their fixtures are good, couldn't you? <laughs> yeah, to be honest, yeah, that, that's true. Uh, if if we were to go back looking at their pre uh, last season's form or last two seasons' form, they have though they they, they, they again they played two promoted sides in the first eight fixtures. Uh, they have Aston Villa away, Newcastle away, and West Ham away, along with Wolves away. So the away fixtures are not really really bang easy on on paper. But yes, mm-hmm. if somebody was to take points from City, it has to be in the beginning of the season. Yeah. Uh, because that's where they're trying to, you know, uh, Haaland would be new. Uh, I'm not really sure who else are they trying to uh, get in. If somebody was to catch and take points from City, it has to be in the beginning of the season. I wouldn't be surprised if it's like a draw, the first one, West Ham away. I actually did a poll on Twitter the other day where I asked what you would prefer to get as a first game, a top six team or a newly promoted team. Right. Most people picked newly promoted team, but I personally would like to play the likes of Man City or Liverpool first game. Catch them off guard, maybe. They're still recovering from the Absolutely. summer. Absolutely. Um, haven't quite gelled yet. So I think West Ham can totally take points from Man City here. Absolutely. Crystal Palace is at home as well. So, so yeah, so Crystal Palace has done uh, a lot of damage last season to Spurs, to City, yep. um, you know, beating them in, in at home. So, yeah, City, again, two, definitely two players going in into your team. It'll be interesting to see how Haaland... Uh, fits in. So obviously, in, as of now, we are speaking about Salah being there, Haaland being there, and these are two premium assets. Assuming ha- Haaland is going to be above 11. 
That's oh, how I think. Sure. We, I think it'll be yeah. at least twelve. Yeah. So let's move on to Chelsea. Interesting first two fixtures for Chelsea, playing against the two ex-managers. Everton away first game could be slippery. These two fixtures for for Chelsea. Yeah, these these are quite difficult fixtures if you look at it. Really, I mean, yeah. Ever, Everton away. It's hard to tell at this point. I can't imagine they're going to be as bad as they were. Surely. Yeah. But even so, an away game against Everton, you can always slip up there. Tottenham away, I think, is going to be a very, very difficult game. Then they have Leeds, fair enough, winnable. Leicester away, sorry, Leicester at home, winnable. Southampton away, winnable. West Ham and Liverpool in the next three. So yeah. I don't think that's an easy run of eight games there. I'm not sure people are going to have any Chelsea players in the game week mm. one. At most one, I think. Probably a wing back, if but... If you're, if you're yeah. looking at Man City defenders, Liverpool defenders, maybe an Arsenal defender, I'm not sure you're going to be able to fit any Chelsea players in. The yeah. ones you want anyway. So, yeah. And also depends. it also depends what on, on a particular FPL manager as well, as in if he or she's looking at the first three fixtures or they're looking at first four or first eight. Right. Uh, if it's first three, any case against having a, a, a Chelsea defender, a wing back, as you said. Mm -hmm. Which in a way, yes, they can concede goals. As you said, you know, <laughs> they can't get worse than la la how they ended last season. Yes, yeah, Spurs will obviously uh, beat any time of the season. It'll be a tough one. But Leeds away, who are, as per different betting agencies, again, are, are going to be in that relegation fight. Could be could be leaking goals as well again. I, I see people picking James or Chilwell in their game week one team. I have, a, I have a very funny feeling people who did pick Chilwell in the first seven, eight game weeks of last season, you know, out of sheer love, they will go for him over James to start with, and he will have a higher uh, ownership. You think so? Maybe. Yeah, I have a feeling. Uh, you heard obviously it, depends, it, it, it depends on it depends on the preseason and the yeah. games that they play and all that. But he's fit. He played the last game of. Yeah, he did. He played against so, Watford at the end. So they have two games uh, against the top four sides in the first eight uh, game weeks. Right, Spurs. This is a very mixed bag of fixtures here. They've got two or three difficult ones in there. Two very difficult ones. A couple of medium ones, and then some easy ones. So kind of a mixed bag here. It's a very good opening game at home to Southampton, oh, but yes, then they immediately absolutely. go away to Chelsea. So then Wolves and yeah. Martin Forest, I expect them to win those. I'm not confident in I'm a Wolves fan, so I'm biased, but I don't think, I think we're going to struggle this year if, unless we sign someone really soon. But we'll right. talk about Wolves after. Um, these are good fixtures, but I think people are going to have to make a decision on Sen or Kane or... Maybe you want to go a little cheaper and get the likes of Kulisevsky instead. But this, this, this is not a this is not triple up territory here, like it was at the end of the season. In my yeah, opinion. I would I would agree absolutely. Uh, Southampton home, yes. Now the interesting part is Southampton home game week one versus Salah uh, away to Fulham. Now this is where I think community might kind of get divided in terms of the captaincy call. So that'll be an interesting one. I don't see any other fixture where you know there could be any other better candidates. So yeah, as you, as you rightly said, uh, first eight fixtures and Conte is someone who starts a little slow. But if he, if he but if he starts well, you know you can. They, 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 those are the danger signs for the other top three teams. I'm very curious how they price Sun. That's mm. gonna that's gonna make it people make interesting choice here. Um, Sun versus Kane. There's no way you're gonna be able to afford them both this year if you want the likes of Salah and. Highland in your team or a premium defense. Right. Lots of decisions to be made on people's teams here. They have been pretty active on the transfer market as well. Perisic. Obviously, per per yeah, Paris is going to be, I think, definitely be on the team. Just like how we gonna, we were dis discussing about the Chelsea wing back, I think Paris will definitely be there, depending obviously on the price, five, five and a half. He's de he'll definitely be cheaper than the likes of Chilwell and. Uh, I, I think Paris should probably be 0.5 cheaper than Chilwell and 1 million cheaper than James. Has I'm to guessing. Be, has to be. I mean that, like, like we said, that Southampton game is captain material, but then the games after that probably not. So yeah, Salah absolutely. makes more choice here. Makes and and as, as you said, uh, it'll be interesting to see if people go for double up on uh, Kane and so on or not, because then it's Chelsea, and uh, you know it's, it's most probably not going to be a high scoring game. Uh, I, mean, so. I, I see, I see the Kane and Son double up being at least twenty four million. That'll so, be crazy. I, I don't think do you, are, you, are you expecting a drop in price for Kane? No, not, not after the way he finished. I think he'll be the same. Yeah, yeah. I the think, way he started? Yeah. If he if he started that way and he was that way the whole season, yeah. then I think a drop would have happened. But then then he right. just, just killed it the rest of the season, didn't he? So I right. think uh, Sun will see a price rise. Kane will stay the same, is what I'm guessing. Uh, it's about time they treated Sun as a truly premium player, because he is. Absolutely. 
Yeah. Absolutely. The awards, the awards suggest otherwise, but... <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started, that's ridiculous. Yeah, it's, yeah, that's a discussion for some other day. Right, United, decent start. Brighton, I, I don't think a new manager can ask for... I wouldn't say a better, they are not pushovers, but uh, Brighton mm-hmm. really finished well. Uh, I think they had a very, very up and down kind of a season. Started well, torrid time in the middle of the season. And I think the way they finished, it's, it's just amazing. Yeah. For, for, for a new manager to really come in and face Brighton home, I wouldn't mind it. Brentford away and then Liverpool. Yeah, these two could be could be tricky. Yeah. I, th- I think this is good for FPL though, because I think you're not going to want a United player for those first three weeks. So you can watch mm. United and see how they play in the Ten Hag. Mm. See if they look any better. Um, evaluate their assets and then maybe look to bring them in game week four for that run of fixtures. So I, I think this is good for FPL managers to yeah. truly assess how good Man United are going to be. I think out of the top six, they are the only team who do not face any of the promoted sides in the first eight game weeks. They, in fact, apart from Leeds and Southampton, they face all the top ten sides from last season. Not sure uh, how the, how their window is going to end. They have yeah. been they have been behind one guy, but it's that's just, that signing doesn't seem to be happening. Uh, uh, it's it's not easy. It's not comfortable right now to mm-hmm. United fans, especially when you have a new manager and. The fans assume, yes, the manager has signed and, and he, he will be backed. Uh, I'm sure he is backed. Being backed is a different thing and you know, pushing the transfer over the line is, is a different thing. Uh, and that's, that's, that's where the scouting team really, really has yeah. to be top-notch. So, out of these six teams, <laughs> just a random question. How many, how many players do you think you will have in, in first two game weeks? Sorry. Let's see. Uh, at least one Arsenal, three Liverpool. So that's four. Let's say two City, five six. Um, no Chelsea for me. I don't think. No Man United for me, and maybe one or two Tottenham. So I, I'm saying I'm saying seven to four, eight. five six. Probably seven eight players from these teams, which yeah, probably yeah. not going to be affordable. So I'm going to have to wait till the prices come out and then really evaluate this because we're going to struggle to get a lot of these premium players in game week one. I think I think that's the fun of it because uh, this season is going to throw a different set of curveballs to you. Like obviously last season was all COVID and postponements and everything, yeah. which I hope uh, should not be the case this time. But especially with this Haaland and the players like Darwin coming in, which just makes, you know, create chaos. Uh, and that's, that's, that's where you will have different strategies. The way that these top three or four teams are starting, I think that's a good start. I have a feeling. I, according yeah. to me, it's a good start. I think it's a good start. I think we're going to see a lot yeah. of different teams. I don't I don't see an obvious template here. Other than Salah, I think everyone's going to have. <laughs> we can only wait for the price predictions and yeah. then we can start, uh, you know, sitting on different tools. And I think tools like Live FPL have already started a new yeah. version. And uh, he's, he, he's just not letting us live, right? He just, <laughs> wants, he just wants us to come on his platform and... Just, just be there. Uh, but hats off to him. Uh, we need more tools like this uh, yeah. where people can have, apply different strategies. All right. Thank you so much for this. And we will be back soon with analysis on the Wolves fixture.